Yeah. Yeah. You're not checking in with GTM TV. You already know it's GTM 2J in the building. I got my co-host, I am Queso. Yo. And today, we got my homegirl, Shells Trudy in the building. What's going on? Yo. Hi, y'all. I appreciate y'all letting me pull up. Appreciate Ooh. you for coming through. In the cold outside, huh? Yo. Yes. <laughs> Not as bad as last night. Last night was worse. Yeah, so I'm going to break out man. Nah, that shit was crazy. Well, we're going to get into the breakdown of what's going on with you. So, for everybody that don't know you, and know where you're from, let the people know where you're from. And who you are. Yeah, so my name is Shelts Truly. Uh, I represent Eastside. Uh, so I'm not especially where I'm really from. I'm from New York, Queens, my way here, Long Island. And uh, I've pretty much been here all my life now. I claim Georgia, so it's like, this is where my music career started. But yeah. <laughs> So, uh, did you have a musical background or something like that? They yes. got you on the music? I did. Um, my father was really into music, so like he had got me into playing instruments. So the first instrument I played was a piano and then a saxophone. And then I started writing poetry. And then I was in the marching band when I got to high school. And so music's always been, yeah, in the background. In the background, for sure. So you say you did poetry? I did poetry. I've always... I've always been writing. So the poetry kind of carried over into the musical side, yeah. put behind the beat. Really and truly. And I, I didn't make the connection until later. And it was like, damn, yeah, like you did, you did always write. But you ain't, I didn't think of it musically. I just was just writing poetry just for what it was, you know, just my mm -hmm. thoughts and stuff like that. So, yeah, I surprised myself. I was just like, ah, oh. so it's all been sitting there. Because I really didn't see music, me actually getting behind, being behind the mic, I didn't see that, like I didn't see that, but it kind of came in the timing of everything, it was just, it was lit, like I loved it, so it was like, why not keep going? <laughs> so who was the first person that you let know that you wanted to like, get into it, like take it serious? Okay, so, I would love to say my cousin, he's the first one who put me behind the mic, mm. like in like 2018, he like put me behind my. He was like, yeah, let's just see if you can write a song. He was like, running make beats and shit. So I'm like, all right, I'm just making guinea pig and shit. But I'm gonna try this shit out, you know. And so this was the first time I sat there, heard a beat for the first time for me, and like wrote. And I never used auto tune before, so it kind of scared me. And I was like, I never use auto tune again. I don't like that shit. But that was my first time recording one. So I told my cousin when I went back to Atlanta, like I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what I can do. And. Uh, then my homeboy, he got his equipment back from, from, from the cops and shit. And he was like, yo, whenever you want to pull up, come on. I was like, he was like, you serious? Mm -hmm. I was like, hell yeah, I can do this shit. <laughs> I was like, I like this shit. I like this shit. Yeah. <laughs> and so he like, you pull up. And that's, I say he's triple F, he's a, that's my nigga. He, he's the first yeah, one who really like sat, sat me. I was like, pull up whenever you want and just experiment. That's what's up. Facts. That's what's up. I always need a helping hand. Facts. That's what's up. Forever grateful being with your mama, with Shannon, big you up. <laughs> so, who are some people that you might get some inspiration from, like, as far as, like, your favorite artists that you may feel like you emulate in your music? And not to be funny, but I don't, I don't think of it like that. Like, I really don't. But when the conversation comes up, like, there's always somebody who'll say, you remind me of, mm -hmm. and I get the, the Laura Hills, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see that, because I used mm -hmm. to, like, go to sleep, wake up, listen to her, like, on She wrote poetry. Huh? Oh, my bad, I mean to cut you off. Yes, up. and she did write poetry. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, it's all, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like unraveling all these little connections in front of y'all, pretty much, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's just like, so, I would say her, for sure. She rapped and she sang, and I feel like I'm doing that in, like, our time. Um, when I had to sit down and really like evaluate it, but yeah, she's she's a person I would love to, you know, master because mm -hmm. she's fine. Like she's fine to me. I'm pretty sure True. she drops something now. It'll be fine. True. So, what's some of the struggles that you deal with as an independent female artist? Uh, you are independent, right? I am independent. Um, some of the struggles it would be. People respecting my money and my and my time, you know, it's just that, you know, I, I guess 
I can, I'm a little softer in approach because I'm a woman. I'm a little bit more patient, but sometimes I guess I gotta, gotta like, I gotta get rough. Yeah. So I get tried a lot there. Um, yeah, just the cost of it, you know. Just to be honest, it's like yo, you really gotta grind. Like I'm, I'm grinding for the shit. Like everything that's coming out is is all hustling and grind behind the scenes. So yeah. I'm not just saying in the, in the studio writing. I'm not just doing that. Like. Right. Oh mom, you know what I'm saying? Like I gotta, I do lashes. That's my hustle to to pay for what I'm trying to do for real, for real. So that's a, that's a struggle, but it's a good struggle. I love the strength in it. We're multifaceted. Yo, I'm telling you, you gotta be like 2020 will definitely show you some things. Speaking of 2020, like being that all this stuff happened with COVID and all these people dying and stuff like that, like all these tragic things happening. How has that affected like your journey, like as far as through the industry? Um, yeah, COVID, COVID is rough. It's teaching me how to really like put my big, big, big girl panties on, like for real. Like you can't be dependent on the white with yourself sometimes, so. Got to fully grow up. Grow up all yeah. the way. Part of life. Like, for real. <laughs> you know so, what was the uh, first record you dropped? Like, first record, uh, as in. My, not on the tape, like my first single. Like, what was the first thing that you released publicly? First song I ever released was Birds. And that song was very dear to me. That was my first tune. I had a video for it and everything. Took my ass to the mountains and shot that video. My cousin shot on my iPhone. Okay. First video ever. Mm. It was lit. I, I mean, I loved it. It's something that I'm always. I like it. I like it. You shared it on Facebook. Huh? You shared it on Hell Facebook. Hell yeah, that was my Facebook. first ever video. My cousin took some fun to that shit. You know, Lord of Toronto. Mm. Hot ass producer and artist. I've been coming as well. But, um. I definitely got some talent. First. First is the first one. Yeah, I think that was. The first little win I had got a yeah, everybody's <laughs> okay. I see what you're going to do. Oh, shit. Hmm? You know, music? Okay. <laughs> I love that song. I don't know why I don't play that shit so much. I don't put it on Instagram that much. Because a lot of people, once they don't work past their first song, they be on to some more shit. As an artist, you like everything that you do, so you be ready to put out some more shit. So I like, can we get that one? So what you working on then? So I have a single I'm about to drop. It's called Twenty East. I got a video right behind it. Um, you already know when you get Twenty East, that's just mm -hmm. where we at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and getting to the paper, that's my main road to my route to my break. So it's just like the song is very close to me, and a lot of people from the east side, everybody been on Twenty East, so. I like that was a song that was like for us. Um, yeah. And it came real natural. That shit kind of came quick too. He used to play it right there in front of me. And I was like, oh, ooh. Mm -hmm. it was like, I'm <laughs> ooh, I like it. Yeah, I like that shit. Yeah, yeah. So, but I got that. And then I got another track called Outside. I can't wait to do that. We got some work to do. Speaking of producers, like who's some of your favorite producers or your go to producers when you're about to work on something? Okay, so that would be Dope Jockey. Dope Jockey be holding me down for sure. We got a lot of tracks that need to get, to get out. That's a real partner of mine. I know Dope Jockey. Dope Jockey. Up the boat. Yeah. The boat. Yeah. Yeah. Straight yeah. up the boat. Um, and it would be K.O. So K.O.'s on it too. Okay. He probably. So yeah, I got two, two people right now that I go back and forth with. And I had another one, Henry. He's probably, I got to give him props because I got... A lot of my tunes from the mixtape is all hip, so yeah, definitely bigger thing for her. Oh yes, bug. That's the. <laughs> That's the new one. That's the new one. Yeah. But engineer wise, yeah, right, still, yeah. But producer, yeah, he definitely be producing some of tracks. He got two of my main ones. So, all right, being that like, you know, you rep the East Side, Stone Mountain, but you like by way from up north, right? Mm -hmm. Is like when you're trying to, as far as the beat process, as far as the whole music process, how much is that like intertwined? Like as far as like what you what you vibe into and what you like 
Basically, what I'm trying to say is how much does the Atlanta culture play a part into, like... In the top of these I choose? Yeah. Um, you know, and that's interesting because I'm, I'm still... I still ask myself that question, too, because it's... The thing with me is, like, I just need to hear a beat. I don't really... Mm-hmm. I listen to so many different types of, like, genre of music, so it's just kind of hard for me to, like, say that specifically I'm going for this particular vibe. Because I'm, I'm emo as fuck, so I, I be in all different types of moods. So really and truly, it just depends on what beat comes. I'm pretty sure that, like, I'm going to find something for it, you know. Because I, I just love, I love the challenge of, like, getting on different types of beats anyway. So I really can't say up top influences most of it. Because, like, I'm feeling the with your beat. But right now, I feel like too many people are doing that. So, you know, and that's, that's New York to me right now. Mm-hmm. Unless I go back, which I can do, but that's gonna be a little too far back. Yeah, I'm not sure. And you, but transition. I'm trying to tell you. You remember that check? That's true. There's a check that um, there's a guy that hit me. He told me that like he wanted me to do a female, like a female version of a sexy talk on a song. You know, it's typical get asking me to do that role as a female. That's another challenge. <laughs> <laughs> like y'all just want me to meet y'all where y'all at. Y'all just want me to talk this sex shit. Okay. So I had a track and he heard it and he was like, that shit was kind of aggressive. Like I was rapping. (laughs) I wasn't doing that sexy (laughs) talk. I'm from New York, so we're a little aggressive, you know. You you, you know how we are. Like we talk a little different. So I wasn't going to come off. Come off the wall. Yeah. But. But why? (laughs) No. That wasn't me. But yeah, I just got to say. But um, so what new project you got coming out again? Mm, I don't know. We gotta ask our management. We haven't really quite figured out if we got an EP yet. We have a lot of songs. We just gotta put it together. But the focus here is just me dropping singles so I could get try to build up some momentum. Mm -hmm. So I just gotta get that down. But hopefully, I feel like we got enough songs to. That's it. You got a lot of songs, though. That's I mean, that's a good problem to have. Like, you just got a lot of songs. We trying to narrow them down. We just trying. Yeah, yeah, we just gotta sit down and listen. For sure, that's it. We just gotta sit down and listen. That means you working. That means you keep just keep just keep doing that. And you know what's so funny? Because I feel like I could be doing a lot more. You know, and that's and that's why I hope that's not gonna be my illness and this shit. Like, don't know when to sit the fuck down, but hey. I just wanna go harder. You know, still. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, right. Oh, you doing any features? Features. Hmm. Actually, yes. I have one pending. Two. I am doing features, but I did slow down on features because I was doing a lot of features at first. Mm-hmm. It was a lot. Um, but now I'm open to it. It just depends on who the person is type of music. It just gotta make sense. Yeah, if it makes sense, then. Yeah. 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 So what's your social media where they can reach you at if they did want to do a feature or a producer want to reach out to you? Well, if you wanted to do a feature with Shells Truly, you just go to at Shells, Tru- Shells underscore Truly on IG. And, uh, Spell it out, fam. S-H-E-L-L-Z, Z, like zebra underscore T-R-U-L-Y. Uh, yeah. All right, so... <laughs> That's that. So, look, uh, I appreciate you for coming on, for doing this interview. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. You was an excellent guest. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Thank we appreciate you. everything. I appreciate y'all, for real. And, uh, hope to see you next time with Absolutely. some new material. And make sure you bring us that exclusive shit so we can be the first ones to put it out. Oh, that's a yes. fact. Definitely. Oh, that's a fact. Oh, yeah. Let them know who the hottest podcast that you rocking with. Okay, we got GTM, get the money. Yeah. This shit for life. GTM, baby.